All right. Good morning once again. Welcome to EAA Air Venture Oshkosh 2024. We are very happy to have an aviator with us today, Miss America Madison Marsh, who has joined us, an Air Force Academy grad who learned to fly at 16 years old. And uh, she's here to talk a little bit about aviation and enjoy aviation. So, um, Madison, welcome to Oshkosh. And uh, we'll give you the podium, talk about your aviation story and just what these past few months have been like for you. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. This is my third air show of the year and really third air show ever. So it's been really great to experience. And someone said to me yesterday, and I, and I really loved it, they said, you come to the air shows the first time for the planes and you keep coming back for the people. And that's definitely been something that has resonated with me this year because when I'm going to these air shows, to be honest, I'm very busy. And so I don't get to see a ton of the flying. But what I do get to see a ton of is the people. And that has been my absolute favorite part because no matter where I am around the globe, I'm always finding so many different communities, especially here in these aviation areas. And what's been so wonderful is a place like Oshkosh and really every air show shows that you don't have to just be a pilot to be a part of the aviation community. I got my start in aviation by being a pilot at the age of 16, but now as I've progressed through my career, my goals and my dreams have changed, and I'm not going to be a pilot for the Air Force, but what's great about Oshkosh and the Air Force is that there are so many other aviation opportunities to be a part of this family without having to actually fly the plane. And I love getting to see all the different companies and the Air Force recruiting services to show all the other young people here that there are so many different avenues to getting invested and getting involved. And it's just been so amazing to get to be a part of that platform this year and really hoping to encourage our youth to get involved in that way uh, and showing them all the different opportunities they might have. And with that, we'll open it up to any questions. Uh from the reporters, anybody have a question to start off here? Quiet group today, I was gonna, okay. Back here from Spectrum News. Hello, good morning. I was just wondering, what does it feel to be a role model, not only for other uh, beauty pageant competitors in the future, but also uh, young aviators as well? So it's been really amazing. I'm the very first active duty military member to win Miss America. And as soon after I won, I knew that this year was not going to be about me. It's about all the other women that have come before me that have opened up those doors to allow me to be in the position that I am now. It's the first woman that joined the military. It was our first female aviators. It was our first woman that came into the Air Force Academy. I would not have been able to be where I am and wear the uniform that I'm in without them. And I hope that by this one small win that I made this year, we can continue opening up those doors for other young women to show them that stereotypes mean nothing. I'm in two very conflicting stereotypical roles when you think about women in the military and you think about women in pageants. If you imagine that in your head, I'm willing to bet those are not the same people that you're gonna think of when you think of those two roles. And I hope that this shows to other young women that you can do whatever you want, and young men as well. You don't have to think of the societal boxes that people try to put you in. As long as you're doing what you love, you can and will truly break any bounds that are set out for you. Okay, another question. Okay, over here, a gentleman from Canada. You could share some of your childhood experiences that led you on this path. Mm. I think the biggest one, I bring this up all the time, I actually wanted to be a marine biologist growing up my entire life. And so my, my family had sent me to go do marine biology with a bunch of young kids. And you basically have to learn how to sail a boat and you're a self-sufficient crew. And I loved it, but then I got to see the stars for the very first time without any light pollution and started to talk to people about space. And I had realized what I wanted to do was become an astronaut. So that dream was born when I was going into the eighth grade and that's what really sparked my entire aviation career. I came home, my parents sent me to space camp. I met all these wonderful astronauts and then by talking to them, I had realized the best way to becoming an astronaut was becoming a pilot. And a really great way to do that is becoming a military pilot. And how I was gonna do that was join the Air Force and go to the Air Force Academy. So it was this singular trip that had led me down all of these different paths. And even though I don't want to be an astronaut anymore, it was those initial dreams that had really caused me to be super driven the past 10 years of my life that have now opened up so many other doors, even if I'm not going down the same path that I originally wanted to go down. All right. 
Any other questions? From, okay, we'll go here and then here. Okay, go ahead. Ben. My name's Andrew. I'm from the Flying Midwest Media. You mentioned that oftentimes you come for the plane and stay for the people, and we've encountered that a lot as well. In your position, uh, you obviously are able to influence and encourage others, but have you met anybody here at Air Venture that really inspired you? And if not, who would that be? Oh man, uh, what, what I really loved yesterday was the women's air venture. I mean, the first thing that I did is I showed up and I think, what was there, like a thousand women standing out there? Young women that were interested in aviation. And I think that to me is so inspiring because we can look at the generation that we have now and how we're impacting the next people and looking at how inspirational they are going to be and how passionate they are about aviation is so refreshing looking back and thinking about how I was at that age and continuing to know that if we continue to work this hard, we can grow that community even more for young men and women. And it was just so beautiful seeing that yesterday. And I think that's a really great part of every single time that I get to go to these aviation events. A uh, question up front here from Addison. Um, what has it been like not only being a part of military aviation, but also now being able to inspire young women to do the same? Well, I, I think a big point of my year is that I'm not going to be a military pilot anymore, but still being able to step into this position, showing others that you can be a part of the Air Force and there's so many other jobs and opportunities outside of being a pilot. That was what I said was my initial passion and interest. But now, after being in this role, I've met airmen all over the globe. I just came from the Royal International Air Tattoo. I got to meet people from all over the globe, all of our allies, and even other different airmen that serve in the U.S. Air Force everywhere. And getting to see all the unique positions that they're in is really inspiring to me and makes me feel so much more comfortable kind of changing those career paths and recognizing there's so much more out there. And being able to share that message with all the other people that might be interested in joining the military or the Air Force is so important because we don't want to misguide them and show there's only this one singular path to join the Air Force, but instead showing them there's so many different avenues that you can serve and put on the uniform, and there are so many different jobs and ways to do it. All right, open to any other questions back here. Just to be clear, can you talk a little bit about your future plans? Um, and then another question I have is, you know, what goes through your mind when you're in the air? So next year, I will be going back to Harvard to finish my graduate school degree. Uh, the Air Force has a really cool program where my first assignment was being a full-time student at Harvard. That is a pretty sick program, if you ask me. That was what I got paid to do. So I have a year and a half left in that. I'm getting a master's in public policy at the Harvard Kennedy School, and I do research in pancreatic cancer on the side. That's what I lost my mom to. And the reason I've kind of switched my career paths is because I've had a big change in heart of what I find my biggest passions are. And pancreatic cancer and policy was such a huge piece of that. So I'm really excited to go back next year and apply all of this medical knowledge and my personal experiences of losing my mom and to the policy that we can enact to help all patients. And then after that, I'll go back into the more conventional Air Force career job. Don't know what that is yet, but I'm super excited because the Air Force has taken really great care of me so far. And when I got to fly civilian aviation, I said I started at the age of 15 on this road of wanting to become an astronaut, but really it was so much more than that because for me, I love the fact that nobody can reach you when you're in the air. <laughs> my favorite thing was literally turning off my phone and it was just me and my instructor pilot. We just got to talk, hang out with each other. I'm flying over my hometown. I could fly over my little house in Arkansas, see my dog running around in the backyard. And I think it is just so cool and so relaxing. And it was really nice being able to unplug because I feel like that's kind of difficult these days because Everyone is always constantly able to reach you, which is really great, but it also makes it very difficult to step away and unplug in sometimes, and aviation was really that outlet for me. Okay. Any other questions from the reporters? Okay, one more here from Edison. What does it mean to you to be here specifically at Oshkosh in a place that's so dedicated to inspiring youth to join aviation? You know, one of my favorite parts of yesterday, we did kind of like a meet and greet over in the Air Force recruiting area, and I just thought it was so cool 
all of the people that I got to meet from across the U.S., uh, young, men, young women, uh, all the way up to retired Air Force veterans. And that in and of itself just shows the community and the impact that Oshkosh has and the ability that all of us have to impact other people because we all have very different stories and how and why we got interested in aviation or the military and we can come here to share and inspire other people or just impact them whenever they leave Oshkosh and hopefully come back. Okay, now uh, question over here. Hey, Flo. Hi, Madison. Uh, this is Airflow from Airflow's Air Show. I have a question. So you are Miss America and you are a fighter jet pilot. Which one you like better? So I'm not a fighter pilot. I only fly civilian aviation uh, in my free time, so I'm not a military pilot. So guess if I'm choosing between those, Miss, or being Miss America, because I'm not serving as a fighter pilot. <laughs> Um, you know, I think it's really difficult to compare the two. It's like comparing apples to oranges. You just can't do it because they're so amazing, but in very different ways from each other because I get to fly in my personal time, uh, but I'm also getting to serve the Air Force in a very different way than I'm serving in my capacity as Miss America. So they're all wonderful in their own very special ways. All right, any other questions? Oh, here, here we go. Hang on, Justin. Just quickly, what is your role in the Air Force? So for this year, uh, they're allowing me to stay on active duty while also being Miss America. And so they've put me into a special position where I'm recruiting for the Air Force, as you can see by coming to events like this and getting to meet all the other young, hopefully upcoming airmen in our Air Force. So that's what I'm doing for this next year. Okay. Anything else from the reporters? Flo, one more. What's the best part you think of Oshkosh Air Show? The best part? Uh, definitely all of the people. I've just loved getting to meet all different age ranges from all around the world. And especially, a, a really special moment of yesterday was I had met someone who had just sworn in for the Air Force, like, moments prior. And she came in line and we got to meet each other. And it was really cool getting to see now I'm five years down the road in my Air Force career and she's just beginning and there is so much opportunity and life changes that are ahead of her. And it's just, I'm thinking back to myself when I was her age, when there was a lot of uncertainty and maybe you're a little bit scared because you're about to go to basic, but just knowing that there is so much positivity to come after she gets to join. So it was really cool to see that yesterday. All right, Madison Marsh, Miss America, thank you for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Um, you could be around for a few more minutes uh, in case any of the local TV wants to catch a quick one-on-one. -on -one. But thank you so much. Thank you for being at Oshkosh and, and being a role model. Really appreciate you being here.